Okay. So that's, a, that's another point, is that your video has to do all of these things, has to tell a story, has to be on target strategically, has to get them in towards the center of your thing, but not be the only part of your marketing plan. Now you're gonna have to establish a trail, and this trail is getting people from the different um, uh, posts that you've got out there back to your website. Because if you're smart in the way that you've built your website, your website is gonna help you sell those customers. Little businesses like ours, we don't have a sales force. You're it, probably, right? But if your website is built properly, it can help convert those customers and prospects into customers in the long haul. One of the things that each of these things has to have is a link, and I'm gonna show you how to put a link on a video in a little while, okay? So you're, you're, you're creating a trail. But as much as a trail as you've got, you have to realize that you are the guide leading your prospects up a trail, okay? So you're the Sherpa in this case. Uh, now I saw a really great video a while back about some Tibetan Sherpas who took a class of 120 blind school kids to the top of Mount Everest. Blind to the top of Mount Everest. That's pretty hairy, right? So these guys had to have understood each of their students really well and have been really good at what they did, super competent and trustworthy. Each of those kids had to have a steadfast faith in, in each of their guides or Sherpas and their ability to get them up the trail and to the, and to the top and back. And we have to find a way to establish that kind of credibility and trust as well. One of the things that does it is you being authentic. Right, all, you be you, let everybody else be everybody else, right? Because that's all we can be anyhow. And people can read it a mile away if you're bullshitting them. So it's about authenticity. It's about you talking about the things that you're really good at and you really know well. So it's a lot about thinking about, okay, what business am I really in? What kinds of problems do I really solve? And what kinds of success stories can I share with other people that will help them believe in me? Okay. And then your posts and your videos and your website and all of that are the trail that they're gonna follow up and back. But they won't stay with you that long unless you do those other things. Demonstrate you know, competency, be authentic, be likable. Those are all the things that have made us successful in the real world all this time anyway, right? Okay. So, this is that sales funnel thing that I was talking about. Every customer, when we buy a product, especially more complicated, more risky, more expensive, more complicated kinds of products, we go through a pretty elaborate decision process about, about buying something, where we think about it a lot. In marketing, we have a really expensive 50 cent word for that called involvement. Things that you buy habitually that you don't think about are low involvement. Things that we spend a lot of time thinking about are high involvement. Okay. Well, the first stage of this journey is awareness. And in awareness, we mean helping people understand that they've got a problem in the first place. Like, I have to buy tires for my car. My front two tires are really wearing thin on trip. Okay. Well, if I see an ad, that says, asks me the question, how's the tread on your tires? I haven't thought about that, I don't know. So the next time I go out to the driveway and I look at it, I'm gonna go, oh, those are kind of thin, maybe I better do something about that. That's planting the seed for awareness. Then the next piece is getting them interested. So now, we're, now that we've achieved the first piece about awareness, you wanna tell them stories and give them information because what are they doing? They're collecting information. Now that they're aware they've got a problem, they're looking for a solution, so they're comparative shopping. So they're taking what they learn about us, they're taking what they learn about other brands, and they're saying, hmm, do I like this or do I not like this? And ultimately, they come to this thing about desire, meaning they've decided that what they've learned about my solution is better than what they've learned about other people's solutions, and they're ready to buy from me. That's called desire. And then action is finally you decided to plunk the money down. At that point, your message needs to be something about, hey, I got a 20% offer on tires right now. 
you can save you know a hundred dollars on, on, on a set or something and now that you've given them a reason why they should go buy their firestones from you instead of the other tire dealer next door to them because they don't have a deal okay and then advocacy is the final stage in this journey when and this is the testimonial this is me going out to Steve's restaurant the other night and saying, hey why do you come here to Eureka and they all sorts of people had all kinds of answers for that question and that's the most powerful thing about social media is what do we do now these uh, nowadays and we like something we post about it right you like somebody's page or you talk you know you talk about something that you bought that you thought was awesome you went to a restaurant you had a good time or you go someplace and you check in those are all forms of or you go to Yelp those are all forms of advocacy so your videos need to touch on elements of these things too here it's just about planting the seed for the problem here it's about giving them information that lets them know why they should like yours and more importantly why they should like yours instead of somebody else's over in here now you've got some kind of a message about okay I need to tip them into my camp what's the deal that I can offer and then finally get people to step up and say why they're so happy that they bought from you so that's again more about content so when you put people through a funnel and they drop down inside that funnel, out pops the money at the bottom. See, isn't that cool? So that's that's the that's that's um, some of the magic to this. Okay, so this is pretty much what all of us have for a marketing model, right? You've got a website, and your website ought to have a blog on it. It could have a video corner too, for the sake of our conversation tonight, right? You've got lots of videos on there. But outside of your website, you have to have a lot of trails. Remember, I've been talking about you have to build a trail to your website. And each of these is a different trail coming back to the top of Everest. Right? So you want to have all of these things activated. Not only that, then, because the whole point is then you've got your customer here. And you want to lead your customer with enough clues so that your customer can follow it and get onto your website. That's really the whole point. But you want to have as much of this activated as you can. Now, if you're going to lead a bunch of students up a mountain and they're blind, are you going to want to know a little bit about them? Are you going to want to know a lot about them, right? Because you have to understand what needs they have and what problems they have, and how to communicate with them, because this is going to be potentially a very long and arduous journey, right? In fact, you might like to know something about, is this person fit to climb? Or is this person in the right physical shape for this trip? Because this is a tough trip. People die on this trip all the time. So even if he is a student and he you know, qualifies in other ways, if this student is 100 pounds overweight, he's probably not a good candidate for this trip, and you don't want to sell him your service for that. He's not the right customer for you. Or is he mentally committed? This is going to be hard every single day of this 30 days that he's going up this mountain. Is he mentally solid? Or um, other problems. Does he have pure motives? Why is he going up? Did you ever read a book by John Krakauer called Into Thin Air? If you guys think this is a fascinating story, you should read that book. Because there was, it's, it talks about how Krakauer took these guys up this mountain. He was one of the people on, on this trip. And there were a number of guides who, even though they knew the right answers and the right ways to solve problems, ignored doing the right things. And a lot of people got stuck in a blizzard at the top of that mountain. Some of them died on that trip. It's an amazing story, and it's true. There's a, there's a really harrowing part where this guy is on the phone on his cell phone to his wife saying goodbye to her because he's dying. He's not coming down. And, and, I mean, it's an intense story, but it's good. Good read. Um, so pure motives, spiritually ready. Are you ready for this trip? So these are all the kinds of things that you, know, you might think about as you're doing this, and you want to know your customers really well. Same thing is true, on the other hand, when you're doing any other kind of sale, you have to understand your buyers. Just like these guides need to know about their climbers, we need to know about the kinds of people we want to serve. 
and it's going to help you plan out your video content. Meaning, okay, how old are my customers? What range? What, what kinds of issues do they have that weigh in on their decision? What kinds of responsibilities do they have? What are their major worries or concerns? Do they have stressors or pain points that you can lock in on in your message that you know if you talk about these things and you know that you're a really solid answer to those kinds of problems, you can probably convince them to buy from you? Then you should address these things. But you only do it if you've done this homework first. What are their purchase drivers? Where are they gonna go to find information? If your customers love video, then YouTube is probably a place for them to go. If they're all solid readers, maybe not, right? So where are they looking for information? What kind of content do they like? When are they gonna be looking for information? Daytime. What's the best way to develop this information? Time in the saddle with your customers, surveys, talking to other people who are in the business. You know, it's, it's just about getting, getting the business all over you. Mm -hmm. You know, just being in it and listening hard and being inquisitive and asking the questions. Yeah, it's experience, yeah.